Hello everyone, now let us discuss about endothelins. Endothelins are three closely related 21 amino acid peptides having potent vasoconstrictor actions. They are mainly ET1, ET2 and ET3. The ET1 is the most prominent endothelin. Coming to endothelin functions. ET1 is functionally the most relevant endothelin. It is produced by nervous tissue, lungs, kidneys, breast, endometrium and other cells. Whereas ET2 and ET3 have been located in kidney, brain, lungs, intestine and adrenal gland. Though ET1 is released into circulation, it primarily acts locally to serve as paracrine or even autocrine signal molecule. And the ETs are rapidly cleared from blood whose plasma T half is 4 to 7 minutes by peptidases in lungs and kidneys as well as by receptor binding. Now coming to the synthesis of ET1. The ET1 is mainly produced from pre-pro-ET1 which is a 2,12 amino acid residue and this is processed to big ET1 and this big ET1 is converted to endothelin 1 in the presence of the enzyme endothelin converting enzyme and this is a metalloprotease and is inhibited by phosphoramidone and this ET1 it rapidly acts on the receptors it mainly has two receptors ETA and ETB and it is rapidly cleared from lungs and kidneys. Coming to the stimuli which stimulates the synthesis of endothelin. They are adrenaline, angiotensin 2, vasopressin, insulin, cortisol, interleukin 1, thrombin, glucose, oxidized, low density lipoproteins, hypoxia and cyclosporin. These are some of the stimuli which trigger the synthesis of ET1. And the stimuli which inhibit the synthesis of ET1 are shear stress, prostaglandin I2, nitric oxide and natriuretic peptides A, B and C. So these receptors ETA and ETB they are G protein coupled receptors and they signal the transduction through mediators like tyrosine kinase and MAP, MAP and phospholipase A2, C and D, inositol triphosphate, calcium, channel, calcium ions and protein kinase C. These are the mediators which do the signal transduction and the effects are gene expression, mitogenesis and contraction and which lead to increased blood pressure, vasoconstriction and vasospasm, smooth muscle proliferation, activation of hypothalamic pituitary axis. These are some of the effects of endothelins. Coming to the actions and roles of endothelins. One more important point is sustained overproduction of endothelins has been implicated in the genesis of pulmonary arterial hypertension, PAH, systemic hypertension, cardiac and vascular hypertrophy, atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease, asthma and chronic renal failure and chronic heart failure. These are some of the pathological conditions where sustained overproduction of endothelins has been seen. Coming to the actions, pronounced and relative long-lasting vasoconstriction in most vascular beds is seen including pulmonary, renal and coronary arteries. It causes renal and cerebral vasospasms also. And IV injection of ET1 initially causes brief fall in BP due to the release of nitric oxide and prostaglandin I2. And this is followed by more marked and sustained rise in BP due to direct action on smooth muscle. The initial fall in BP is due to the receptor ETB which is mediated by the release of nitric oxide and PGI2. The next action is increase in heart rate and contractility is seen. One more important point is endothelin 1 is involved in the development of cardiorespiratory systems. Hence it is con endothelin antagonists are contraindicated in the pregnancy and they are found to be teratogenic in animals. The next action is construction of renal vessels. It reduces the glomerular filtration rate and renal output. It also causes natriuresis and diuresis via ETB receptors on the tubular epithelial cells. And the ET1 acts on adrenals and promotes the aldosterone release which, con which further contributes to salt and water retention. It also releases other hormones like ANP, natriuretic peptide, anatriuretic peptide, noradrenaline, hypothalamic and other pituitary hormones. It causes bronchoconstriction and rise in pulmonary arterial pressure. 
and it has a mitogenic action. The mitogenic action of ET1, it promotes the proliferation of vascular smooth muscle, cardiac myocyte and perivascular fibroblasts as well as other connective tissue cells. And this leads to hyperplasia. They are also involved in, additionally endothelins are also involved in thyroglobulin synthesis. ET1 concentrations are extremely high in thyroid follicle. Coming to the receptors, there are mainly two types of receptors, ETA and ETB. Both are G-protein coupled receptors, then ETA it has higher affinity for ET1, whereas ETB has equal affinity for all the three ETs, that is ET1, ET2 and ET3. ETA receptors are mostly expressed in vascular and smooth muscle, whereas ETB receptors are expressed in vascular endothelium, kidneys, adrenals, brain. One more important point is, Serifotoxin, it, it is a venom, it is obtained from venom, SC6 is obtained from venom and is a selective agonist, agonist of ETB and is used as a pharmacological tool to study the actions mediated by ETB receptors. Coming to the overall pharmacological actions of ETA and ETB receptors, the ETA receptors are mainly involved in vasoconstriction, bronchoconstriction, stimulation of aldosterone levels. Whereas ETB receptors are involved in vasodilation and inhibition of XYO platelet aggregation. Coming to the mechanism, we know that both endothelin receptors are G-protein coupled receptors and activation of both results in PLC, IP3, DAG and calcium ion release mediated contractile response. On the other hand, the vascular endothelium expresses ETB receptor activation of which indirectly affects or elicits vasodilation by releasing nitric oxide and prostaglandin I2. Initial fall in BP, whenever intravenous administration of ET1 is seen because of this reason. And sustained action of both receptors is found to be mitogenic and it results in tissue hyperplasia in tissues like cardiac or vascular myocyte, perivascular fibroblast and other connective tissue. Coming to endothelin receptor antagonists, three endothelin receptor antagonists have been clinically approved for pulmonary arterial hypertension. PAH as such is a different topic. We will discuss in detail about pulmonary arterial hypertension in a separate session. As of now, let us discuss the definition of pulmonary arterial hypertension. It is an uncommon condition characterized by severe remodeling of small pulmonary arteries causing rise in pulmonary arterial pressure about 25 mm Hg resulting in right heart failure and death. And what is the significance of ETA receptor antagonists in PAH? ETA receptors are richly expressed in pulmonary artery smooth muscle, airway and lung fibroblasts. Hence, in PAH patients, the ET1 is the potent pulmonary vasoconstrictor and smooth muscle mitogen. So coming to the receptor antagonists, there are two types of receptor antagonists. The first one is dual ETA and ETB antagonists and the next is selective ETA antagonists. The examples of dual ETA and ETB antagonists are bosentan and macitentan. Example of selective ETA antagonists is ambricentan and another drug cetac Cetaxantan, it is withdrawn from clinical trials due to fatal hepatotoxicity. Coming to the overall actions of endothelin receptor antagonist, both dual endothelin receptor antagonist and selective ETA antagonist, they produce similar pharmacological actions. And all endothelin receptor antagonists are non-peptide and orally active. In PAH patients, they lower the pulmonary artery pressure improve hemodynamic parameters, increase the exercise capacity and reduce the risk of worsening of clinical conditions of PAH and they significantly reduce the mortality rate. These are some of the therapeutic benefits that endothelial receptor antagonists offer especially in pulmonary arterial hypertensive patients. Coming to the first drug, it is Bonsantan, Bosantan. It is the first endothelin receptor antagonist to be clinically approved. It is a sulfamide and dual ETA and ETB antagonist. Both initial depressor and subsequent pressor response to IV ET1 are blocked by bosantan. 
Coming to the pharmacokinetics, it is orally active non-peptide, bioavailability is 50%, plasma T half is 6 hours, it is metabolized in liver by CYP2C9 and CYP3A4, it is excreted in bile. Coming to dosage, no dose adjustment is needed in renal failure, but bosantan is contraindicated in liver disease because it causes dose dependent elevation in hepatic aminotransferases and carries a risk of hepatic injury. Hence, it is contraindicated in liver disease and there is no dose adjustment is required in renal failure. Coming to the drug interactions, it induces CYP3A4 and CYP2C9 isoenzymes and can interact with many drugs like warfarin, oral contraceptives, glibenclamide and simvastatin. Additionally, bosantan is an auto-inducer that is it induces its own uh, metabolism. Hence, Initial dose of 62.5 mg twice a day is mostly doubled to 125 mg twice a day after 4 weeks. Ketoconazole doubles the blood levels and rifampicin lowers the blood levels of bosantan. The marketed formulations are bosantas, lupibos, bostan which are available in 62.5 to 125 mg tablets. The next drug is Massey Tentan. It is a new dual ETA ETB antagonist with high affinity for ETA than ETB. Pharmacokinetics are it is orally active non peptide. Oral absorption is slow, it takes 8 to 10 hours. The plasma T half is 17 hours and it is metabolized in liver by CYP3A4 through oxidation. And one metabolite is active whose plasma T half is 48 hours. It is excreted mainly in urine and bile. Coming to dosage, no modification of dose of warfarin or sildenafil is required which are co-administered in pulmonary arterial hypertensive patients. In clinical trials, macitentan reduced the mortality rate in PAH patients by 45% and it is approved for monotherapy as well as in combination with PDE5 inhibitor or IV epoprostinol which is a prostaglandin I2 analog. Then Macitentan has good tolerability profile. The adverse effects are headache, nasopharyngitis, anemia, peripheral edema and aminotransferase elevation. Coming to the dose, it is given in 10 mg once a day. Coming to the next drug, it is Ambi Ambrisentan. Unlike Bosantan and Macitentan, Ambrisentan is a relatively selective ETA antagonist. It has four times greater affinity for ETA than ETB. And it has a theoretical advantage of retaining the vasodilator function through ETB. And it is not a sulfamide derivative, hence it carries a low risk of aminotransferase elevation. Coming to the pharmacokinetics, it is orally active non-peptide, bioavailability is 90%, plasma T half is 12 to 15 hours, and it is metabolized in liver by CYP3A4 and through glucuronidation. And it is excreted mainly in bile and 20% in Coming to the dosage, no modification of dose of warfarin or sildenafil is required which are given in pulmonary arterial hypertension. Ambrisentan is generally well tolerated. Peripheral edema is the most common side effect. And in clinical trials, the liver enzymes were raised only in 2% patients and was reversible. One more trial showed that ambisentran when combined with tadalafil which is a PDE5 inhibitor has improved the efficacy and reduced the risk of clinical failure in PAH patients. Coming to the marketed formulations, they are Pulmonext, Ambrican, Endoblock, Zambri, which are available in 5 and 10 mg tablets. Coming to the overall side effects or adverse effects of endothelin receptor antagonists, the general side effects are due to their vasodilator property producing headache, nasal congestion, flushing and palpitations. Peripheral, peripheral edema is also common especially with ambrisentan. The next adverse effect is, major adverse effect is elevation of aminotransferase levels. It is common with bosantan but it is reversible. The next is anemia. Due to fluid retention and hemodilution, a mild lowering of hemoglobin level hemoglobin percent and hematocrit value occurs whenever we take ETA, ERAs, endothelin receptor antagonists. 
And finally, all endothelial receptor antagonists are contraindicated in pregnancy and are found to be teratogenic in animals. In clinical trials, pregnant women were not given the ERAs, but whenever they are performed in animals, they were found to be teratogenic and ERAs are contraindicated in pregnancy. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on pharmacology and other related pharmaceutical sciences.